Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Are you guys having good time with, uh, with all the sessions that are happening? Lots, lots of uh, exciting talks that are happening parallelly too. So, uh, but this is something which is, um, you know, I, I think I was really looking forward to. Um, Surajit uh, is actually uh, one of those success stories that came out from India. Uh, had the number one free downloaded game. Uh, across the globe and uh, especially in the major studios, primarily in the US, during the Christmas time, and it's it's it, I think it's it's amazing. So I think uh, we uh, it's an inspiration. A lot of people would uh, you know get inspired with your story, and we would uh, love to hear more from you, Surajit. So I think uh, you can take over from here and give your intro and talk about what you are up to, and I will go and backstage and you know start. Uh, watching the content and meet you during the Q&A. Awesome. Now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Imtiaz. So I got to thank Imtiaz for that glowing introduction. Um, it's honestly been uh, an incredible journey over the last oh, couple of years. And um, I'd love to take you through that story um, because it's, it's not a story about me. It's not a story about just me. It's a story about a team that we built, um, that was built over many years and a lot of hard work and effort that went into um, a lot of the success that we've had. And I think the best way to help you guys learn from what we've done is um, to just take you through our story first and then I'll go over the, lear the learnings that we've had that you'll see through the story itself. So uh, I'm just going to present my screen. And I'm going to switch on the camera. Mm, yes, all right, guys. So this is the story of Firescore Interactive. Um, but before I get into the story of Firescore Interactive, I'd like to tell you a bit about myself, because I myself have been in the gaming industry for around 10 years. Um, I started off as a professional Dota player. Um, I used to play tournaments were monthly and uh, we made money on eventually captain represent the, represented the country at a tournament and then eventually retired um when i did that when, uh, when i retired i then formed uh, co-founded a company with one of my teammates at the time called afk gaming which was an esports company and uh, at that around that time i realized that uh, rather than being on the side of playing the games, there was a much bigger future potentially waiting for me um, on the side of making the games. Because just as a business, it always seemed like, you know, I'd rather be the one making the game that everyone is playing rather than the one playing the game that the others are making. So um, yeah, that's when I switched uh, careers within gaming itself, went from being a, a competitor in esports. Um, I became a game designer at a company called Western Outdoor Interactive where we made games for in-flight entertainment. Um, I did that for four years before starting uh, co-founding a company called Bioff Studios with uh, one of my friends who worked with me at uh, WOI. Uh, we, had, we, we did a bunch of different games. We did um, arcade games. We did uh, trivia games. We eventually settled on doing real-time multiplayer card games. We did a game called Bluff. Which, uh, which we had in soft launch for around six months. And I believe around that time, we were one of the only small studios doing soft launches. Um, learned a lot from that experience, but the game didn't work out. And eventually, we closed Payop Studios down. Uh, then in 2018 is when uh, I started working closely with my current co-founder, Karan Kherajani, who was uh, the co-founder of All in the Days Play. And I'm going to take you through a bit of the beginning of that story. So. So how did Firescore begin? In 2018, um, when we started working together, when Karan and I started working together, we decided to build some hyper-casual games. And uh, I think the plan was we'd, we'd build 10 hyper-casual games. And we built nine. We tested them with Voodoo. You can see some of them on the right side of the screen. Um, and all nine failed. And this is, this is a story. This is the power of our story that a lot of people don't know because um, it's only the recent stuff. That gets talked about. But yeah, we did try have casual games back in 2018, and um, all the tests we tried failed at that time. Uh, this is when we decided to move on and try a different product. 
and we focus the entire team's effort on a single real money gaming application called Pocketly. And um, the, the aim of Pocket League was to help players come in, play games, and win money. They would wager against each other, and uh, the business would then keep a cut from the money that was being wagered. We had over 200,000 users, but unfortunately, we failed to hit any positive unit economics. Um, so we, we knew we couldn't scale the product on our own. We wouldn't make a profit. And at the same time, while we were running Pocket League, we also were trying to raise money so that we would have runway as a company to last two or three years. But again, we failed to raise money as well. And you know what happens next? Because after one year of running the company, we're running out of funds. So so what do we do now? And what do you do when what do you do when you're running for running after money? When you're running out of money and you're running after money, there's only a few things you can really do. And those are things we tried. We tried to pick up services projects. We, worked with uh, a bunch of different companies in uh, Indian gaming companies. We worked with other tech companies and we tried to do as many services projects as we could. We had a lot of help from a few friends in the industry as well. Um, and you know, that is one of the ways we looked at surviving. We really wanted to keep the team together. The team was amazing. It had been part of all in a day's play with Karan um, for four years before that. And they were a really strong team already had um, some success and there was no way we were we wanted to let the team go in any way so after having developed the hyper casual games in 2018 and having then built and failed at at pocket league the 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 next goal like i said was to make money and beyond the services projects um we had heard about crazy labs investing in um, the hyper casual space uh, for indie developers and we had heard of, there was a lot of movement in hyper casual beyond just what voodoo had done and there were a lot of companies and publishers that had spawned all over the world um the article that you see alongside is something that uh, i remember Karan spotted this article and uh, sent out a cold mail to crazy labs and uh, this is what happened next basically the cold mail was spotted by our guardian angel, as we call her. Her name is Moria Goldstein, who spotted that cold mail. And at this time, you know, we hadn't paid salaries for a couple of months. Everyone was a little on edge, including, um, you know, every single person in the team wasn't sure what they were going to do next. And this is why we call our publishing head at Crazy Labs, Mor uh, Moria Goldstein, our guardian angel, because it was literally at that time when we had absolutely nothing, when we got a response and we got a deal that would allow us to then make money and keep the studio alive. And the intention of this deal was, um, there was only one goal, which was to make a super hit hyper casual game. And um, Moria spotted that the team had some potential. And so we started working together very closely on hyper casual games. Um, this was the beginning of our recent journey. And um, this is the part that most of you may have heard about um, either on LinkedIn or in the media. So the, the, the start of this story is we tested two games. Um, both were simulation style games, ASMR style games, and uh, both games failed. And we were working closely with Crazy Labs and the publishing managers there. And you know, after the nine games from before and then the two games now, it was already a lot of failure that we had been through. And it was very important for us to get the motivation um, to keep going from Crazy Labs because no matter no matter what happened with those early tests, we were always told just keep at it. You know, you guys are talented. Keep at it, and eventually you'll get a hit. Then um, we pitched soap cutting in a casual conversation with Moria, as you can see, current conversation with Moria when we pitched soap cutting to them, and uh, she happened to love the idea because satisfying um, videos was something that we're doing really really well at the time. And that's when we started preparing the game for the CPI test. And um, sorry, and uh, we got the game out actually into CPI test. And um, the CPI, right? The CPI was actually very, very low at six cents. So um, soap cutting basically was not an easy game to prototype at all. Um, when you look at it from the outside, it is a game that looks like, hey, and we got this a lot from fellow developers, hey, I could make that so simple. 
you know that's such an easy game to make but when you actually when we actually sat down to make it there were a few times in the process where we almost said you know we can't do this because technically it was a very difficult challenge to actually execute the cutting of a mesh and if it wasn't for our talented and experienced team um, and our lead developer and our lead artist who actually sat together and figured out how to do this in the most efficient way technically where it would become the most satisfying and uh, most satisfying replication of the youtube videos that we saw so without that collaboration of our team of our experienced team members and the knowledge that they had built over the years i don't think this game would have ever made it to launch so once we figure out how to actually execute um, the pieces of soap breaking breaking into little blocks and popping out of the the soap model um, this is when uh, we basically put the game out for cpi test and um, it, it, there was a lot of effort involved in just getting to that point and the sixth sense of cpi that you saw was a result of many 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 hours of technical you know headache solved of obstacles being crossed and um, eventually it was that low cpi of six cents which was what made soap cutting a very very big success um the day one retention at the start when we tested was at 37 uh, 37% so it wasn't that high but um as we continue to build the game as we continue to build features um as we continue to add content actually um our day one retention shot up by another 15 20% so um we eventually had one or uh, a final test had a day one retention of around 60% um and um, that that yeah it, it was it was a very strong it was a very strong launch um launch it was very strong launch metrics at the time especially for a simulation game like this which um, really didn't have any challenge to it whatsoever so i want to take you back to uh, one year ago at IGDC 2019 before uh, before covid before you know uh, where we were at the conference physically in hyderabad um the day it, it was very strange because um my co-founder karan and i we were at the conference in the daytime we were at investor publisher connect and um, we were pitching for investment to try and get pocket league up and running which was our real money gaming app and um, we could not raise money and we kept going through that failure of hey going to investors going to publishers saying hey you know we need a deal or uh, we have this product it's doing decently but we need money we need runway and at night our team was spending the nights in bombay while we were sitting and pitching for money in hyderabad the team was sitting in bombay and actually building levels for soap cutting and um, there was a lot of hard work that went into building those levels so that we could get the retention up or uh, work was you know it was it happened overnight while we were in hyderabad we were up coordinating with everyone these guys were up 24 hours uh, making things happen and eventually once we submitted uh, the game after the final test we got the publishing deal and the rest as they say is history but um, to remind you of some of that history on christmas day in 2019 america woke up to soap cutting as the number one app on ios and, and it wasn't just the number one game it was the number one app so christmas morning we wake up uh and you know it's like the biggest christmas gift you could ever get and it was a result of a lot of hard work and effort that went into this so it was it was a great achievement for the team and i got to say that without the help of our publishers we would definitely not uh, not be in this position so this is the team that built soap cutting our core team uh, karan on the left in the blue t-shirt and that's me on the right in the black t-shirt uh, our lead developer and artist on the left side beyon karan and our 3d modeler and our junior programmer um hari on the right side so this is a team that built soap cutting um a lot of a lot of years maybe around 35 to 40 years of gaming industry experience in that team and um, w- without without those years of experience without the hard work that we put in uh, during the process of building soap cutting and without the help of our publishers we like i said we would not definitely not be here so just because the game um, launches it does not mean it will be successful that is just the first step the real hard work begins once the game launches because post launch the numbers are just going to keep dropping meaning your cpi your cpi and your retention and the revenue you make is just going to keep dropping 
if you don't build new features, if you don't keep the game relevant, if you don't evolve the marketing strategy, the UA videos, the, the publisher will be responsible for the marketing side of things, but the studio is responsible for what you actually build in the game. So you need to be ready with your next set of features. How are you going to continue improving the retention? How are you going to give the marketing team new features to build on, new videos to build from your new features? And so as you can see on the right side, uh, one of the things we did was a bonus level where um, we just took the core mechanics and we added gold to it, which was something that we had seen a few other games do and it seemed to work well. And like this feature, there are many other features that went into soap cutting beyond this, which actually helped with the R pro, with the retention, and even with the CPI. So, um, you know, like I said, this is a team effort from the beginning, and um, our team just happens to be one part of that effort. The there is a whole other side of things that the developer or the development studio does not ever get involved with. Um, unless the game gets published. But to give you an example, when we, pub when we actually published Soap Cutting, there were 20 other people from around the world from Crazy Labs team actually there to support us. Everyone from QA to engineers to design people, everyone working together to help this game make as much money as possible. And, you know, like we totally felt part of the Crazy Labs family when this happened because, um, you know, it was, there's a lot of communication, transparency, and a lot of help that's required to then to take that game that just got published and to keep making money off of it. You know, and like hypercasual games have a short lifespan. So you really need to make the most of those, that first month, that second month, third month. You know, these are critical times for your game when you're going to be scaling and you need to be ready with what you're going to do. And a publisher is a big part of getting you ready and getting you there and making sure that you continue to make as much money as possible from your game. Uh, yeah, and uh, the, 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 teams, the teams themselves that get involved are almost critical, I would say, to scaling a game. Because if we were, if we were doing everything we had to do for soap cutting, if we were doing it alone, again, I, I don't think that it would be possible to do it without the help of the teams that the publishers made available to us. So I think that's a very critical part um, that a lot of people maybe don't get is that the just passing the tests and getting the game to launch is only the first step. And there are many more steps beyond that that, uh, that we need to take to make sure that the game actually generates a lot of revenue. So uh, we had an amazing relationship with Crazy Labs by this point, and it was around June 2020 when uh, our post soap cutting and while we were around six months in from launch we struck a deal with crazy labs to start the crazy labs india hub uh, moria who and moria goldstein and rotem eldor who work for crazy labs they um, they 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 got in touch with us and um, you know we had a we had this vision of starting a hub for indian studios to incubate them and help them and accelerate the time it takes to make a hit game based on everything we had learned from just getting soap cutting done and all the further tests that we had done beyond that. And uh, this was started in June 2020. And here's a few things that Crazy Labs India does. Um, we are focused on training up studios uh, who want to get into hyper casual games or who want to build hyper casual hits we focus on accelerating the process of getting there. So, you know, it takes a long time to understand the nitty gritties of hyper casual. It's not as easy as it seems from the outside. There's a lot that goes into it, both pre-launch and post-launch. And, you know, a lot of studios that are in hyper casual already will tell you how difficult it is to pass a CTR and a CPC test, and in, then to pass the retention test and the monetization test and actually get a game to launch. So um, there are a lot of things that we're able to offer from all of our learnings so far from uh, just the last 12 months. Uh, as part of the Crazy Labs uh, India program, we also offer financial support for the studios and we're able to provide minimum guarantee deals. Um, we help with ideation, picking the right ideas, how to execute the ideas, 
the best way technical help um we offer you know uh, direct sessions with the uh, crazy labs hq and their publishing heads and publishing managers and um, a lot of training programs you know over the course of the the time period that studio sign sign on with us um, to gear towards helping them accelerate the time it takes to make a hit game currently there's three studios working with us and um, you know once uh, covid allows us we will have uh, an offline space where in in starting off in mumbai where studios can actually come in and, and work from here and you know collaborate with us on a daily basis the objective of all of this is to make india hub for hyper casual hits uh, we want to see india do well we want to see young studios do well we want to we want to make our mark on the global market and we want to be part of the success of other indian studios and we, we really we really believe that um, india has a lot of potential and that potential is is being realized already as we're seeing a lot of hits coming out of india uh, the crazy labs india program can offer you all the support you need to start off or to enhance your skills as a hyper casual studio so beyond this um, once we started the hub we it led to us eventually building our next hit game which was acrylic nails is the first hit um, to come out of the uh, of the india program and um, you know as you guys may have seen in the last few couple of months we were number 2 in the top charts so uh, in the us and a lot of other countries right behind among us unfortunately we could never dethrone among us um this time we did not hit that number one spot uh, for apps or games worldwide but uh, acrylic nails has been an amazing experience in itself and uh, there is a there's a lot of learning we've had and a lot of enhancement of our relationships with our publishers um you know due to this success and th these are things that will continue to grow and these are these are learnings that we will continue to give out through the crazy hub india program so i want to take you through um you know the key learnings from our journey because it, while it's been it, it is a great story to hear there are a few uh, very important things that that you know i want to drill into anyone who's listening and anyone you know who is willing to take on this information because um, these are things that you know as a startup studio you don't you may not realize you may not know you may not be getting this information from publishers or this advice so um i i advise you to to take as much of this as you can because these are these are important things that we've learned from the couple of successes we've had um the first thing is the first 5 seconds of uh, of any ctr video are absolutely critical so in those 5 seconds uh, you need to communicate in a very crystal clear way what your game mechanics and what your controls are anyone watching the video should be able to understand those two things in the first 5 seconds and it, sh it there should be no confusion of those two things whatsoever i would suggest maybe even you know giving it to a parent giving the uh, showing the video to a parent showing the video to a child seeing if they understand at least what's going on then you're probably on the right track uh, once you pass a ctr or cpi test uh, you got to go you got to go 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 you got to move because somebody's already seen the video somebody's already working on the same idea somebody had the same inspiration as you somewhere or the other it's happened to us so many times over the last year where we've been working on a game we've been almost there with the ctr or the cpi test and somebody came out and published one you know right before us and i'm sure it's happened to many of you guys listening as well but uh, if you pass a ctr or cpi test you need to go to market as soon as possible which means you need to get your retention test done asap you need to get your monetization test done asap or uh, you need to go through the iterations that come in with each of those tests and you need to publish as quickly as possible remember that the cpi that you get in the initial stages is not going to stay the same at scale um cpi decay is a thing uh, and you need to work hard to keep the cpi at a certain level to keep your game profitable because if your cpi decays very quickly and you don't evolve the game or you or you don't evolve the marketing strategy or you don't have new features coming in or new things that could attract players then uh, the game is not going to stay profitable for very long once you pass all the tests like i said that's when the real start real work starts uh, passing the tests you know comes down to many many different things some of the things i mentioned above 
um, but you know some of it is down to timing some of it is down to luck but once you do pass the test that's when the real work actually begins so be prepared that you know it's not the end once you once you're getting a game published it's just the beginning but that beginning has a lot of reward so it will be worth it so so those were more production side of of, of learnings and tips that i could give you I'd like to give you some strategic tips as well. Um, maybe as a business, as a founder, um, as somebody working in a studio, uh, these are some strategic tips that I'd, I'd like to share with you. First and probably the most important one is adopt failure as a process. Meaning that failure is not something that you need to get disappointed by because in the process of building hyper casual games, the, the path to success and the shortest route through su to success is through a lot of failure because you will test a lot of games, you will learn a lot of things from those games. And eventually, once you understand the basics and you get the idea right, you get you time the market right with your game, uh, you know, that is when success comes. It's after a lot of failure and you need to adopt failure as a process because it's, it's, it's just supposed to fail. You know, you're supposed to fail in this approach to building games and that's not a bad thing. What I would keep in mind is try to keep your failure progressive and the numbers will tell you if you're progressing well or not. So if you're improving over time with your CTR, CPI numbers, if you're passing tests more often than you're failing them as you progress, then you know that your failure is progressing. So keep that in mind, but adopt failure as a progress. Uh, confidence is great. Balance it with humility because uh, there's a lot that if you don't know anything about hypercasual, there is a lot yet to learn. We had to go through a massive unlearning process of everything we knew about games before we actually started learning about hypercasual. So it's not just that you have to learn new things, but yet there's a lot of things we have to unlearn before we even start, you know, learning and accepting information about hypercasual. So, so yes, be confident in your ideas. Yes, you know, have a little bit of ego about you know what you want to build, but at the end of the day, you must balance it with humility, which will help you learn. And progressive failure is a great place to be it's a great place to start and that's where you should be you know aiming your mindset keep an eye on the top charts try to predict trends look at what's going on not just on the app stores but also on youtube on tiktok on snapchat you know what are the things that are popular in the market and uh, and how do you bring those to the hyper casual gaming space you got to try to predict trends um, you know it's not easy but a lot of times you will see that there are certain types of videos or certain types of games that are coming to the top charts or that are getting viewed by millions and millions of people. Um, and you can see that happening if you're analyzing the market constantly. So, you know, keep an eye on the top charts. Always try to be on top of trends. There's no harm in experimenting. In fact, it can get you a lot of great resu results. Um, while looking at the market and looking at top charts and looking at you know other games can give you a lot of inspiration there is absolutely no harm in experimentation because there are a lot of experimental games that have also made it to the top charts and it is a healthy practice to experiment with unique games that are completely out of the box that have never been tried before in fact those are the games that you know might give you the best results as well because they stand out so much in the market uh, play as many games as possible it's not just about knowing what kind of games people are building, but also about the mechanics they're using, the controls that are becoming popular. Um, how, is, how is somebody doing a certain subgenre of, of hyper casual games? How is somebody doing action games in hyper casual? You know, are they showing a crosshair on the screen? Uh, is, is my finger the crosshair? What, what are those little things about those, those few genres that you want to build? that you could learn from playing these games. And you can only learn those things from playing those games because a lot of them are very subtle, but they're very, very important. Um, and you know, the, the, first, the first thing I said and the last thing I said are going to be the same, which is that failure is part of the process. And you know, every time you fail a test, you have the try again button and you need to try again and again and again because eventually you will get there. But without adopting failure as a process, um you know it, it could get very hard and it's very emotional every time a game that you really love fails but you know once you adopt failure as a thing that's just part of your life uh, with these tests 
I think it makes the process of building much more fun, much more fulfilling. And then eventually you get a clear head to learn and hopefully at some point get that massive hyper casual hit. Here are some more pieces of advice that are more general. Um, you need to form partnerships and reach out to publishers. As a lot of you are seeing in the industry, um, publishers are now everywhere. There's many publishers around. They want you. Um, you know, they want you to come on board. They want you to build hits with them. They're willing to offer financial support. So don't hesitate to form partnerships and reach out to publishers. Self-publishing is definitely one way to go. But uh, the way the market is right now, my advice to any new studio, any young studio would be reach out to publishers, form partnerships. Um, if for nothing else, then work with them for some time. So you learn. You learn the process of soft launch. You learn the process of CTR test. You understand what's going on in the market. It makes you a very strong market reader and trend reader. And you know there's almost nothing you'll, you can possibly regret from just trying it out because we've just learned so much. And like I was saying, IDDC 2019, we're running out of money. The team wants to leave. Uh, salary is not paid. IDDC 2020, we have two hits, you know, so that, that, that if, if nothing else, then use that as the example to try and build a partnership, a healthy partnership with a good publisher. Don't compromise on team, mem team members. Um, as you've seen from our story, our team is, was the most important thing uh, when we built soap cutting, when we built acrylic nails, these are uh, the, the members of the team are what actually take you forward and make the games that you want to make. So don't compromise on team members. Make sure that you have hard workers or really talented people or a combination of both. And um, you know people who are hungry, willing to learn, and who will you know, go beyond what is, what is normal to get you to that hit. Because sometimes it takes a lot more than what is normal to actually get a game published and make a super hit number one game. So you can drop me a line at sorojit at pocketleague.in um, or you can drop my partner Karan a line at karan at pocketleague.in. Uh, it's been great to share our story with you and I hope you guys could um, learn something and have some takeaways from this. And you know, we are open to conversation anytime. You can reach out to us whether it's regarding the crazy hub, whether it's regarding advice you need, whether um, you want to work with us in some other way. You know, please reach out to us and let us know uh, how we can collaborate together. Great, great, Saroja. Thank you so much. You can actually uh, stop presenting so that uh, we all can see your full screen there. Great. Uh, again, uh, Saroja, there were a few questions that, I mean, I, we don't have a lot of yeah. time, but a couple of you might like to uh, take a shot sure. at. Uh, there was this one interesting that uh, question that came in from Joel. He was very curious about um, why... So why, in order to the make to make the video, uh, you have to make the game, uh, or do you have to make the game first? If if we are making the game, why aren't we trying to test the game directly instead of uh, testing the video? So it's an interesting question, and you know, like anyone looking at the outside from the outside, also outside the industry, wonders this exact thing, like what exactly is going on here. So uh, the way I see it is more like you know, it's like a it's like making the trailer for the movie, and then putting it out, testing the response. And only if the trailer gets a good response, do you actually go on to spend that $10 million on making the game or on making the, on making the full movie. All right. So similarly here, what we're doing is we're testing a trailer. All right. It's a, it's a way, that's the way I look at it is that if we were, if we were doing movies, we would be testing a trailer. So we're testing a trailer for the game. And only if that test, that trailer tests well, do we actually invest the money that it takes to build the full game. All right. So when we test the videos also, we don't make, like the entire game. We don't even make the entire level sometimes. Sometimes we just make like, you know, one short part of the level as an animation and we test that. And you know, there's there's no game built at all. It's just like an animation. And you know, we put together a trailer for the game, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and we test that out. Now, when we get the data back on how well that tested, um, you know, that's when we know whether the game is a viable game to proceed with or not. Lovely. So I will take one more question. Uh, there. Looks like there are a bunch of them. Everyone wants to have a question there. Uh, Amit uh, Gupta, uh, he is asking the question more in, for uh, Indian audiences. And uh, like uh, if you are focusing India, Geo, 
uh, what would be the acquisition channels that someone would look for for the hyper casual genre? Um, people are still on Facebook here. People are still on Instagram here. So those are good channels. TikTok is banned. Otherwise, it was a great. Um, it would have been a great acquisition channel. Uh, and yeah, I think Facebook and Instagram are the two main ones I would look at, and probably YouTube. YouTube is another good place. A lot of people spend a lot of time there. So in figuring out a YouTube. Uh, YouTube strategy may be something that works, um, but we've never tried, you know, direct marketing on YouTube. So I can't really say from experience. But Facebook, Instagram are good places for Indian UA. Yeah. So there, this is really one question which got a lot of love. Um, you know, so what are the good? What are some good ways to get great casual games ideas? So <laughs> Abhishek Joshi is asking. So do you want to pick that? Yeah. Um, I look everywhere, honestly, and the team I know, um, everyone in our team, Karan, me, you know, all the guys, we look everywhere for ideas. It's not, um, it's not like one or two places. It's, it's where can you find inspiration for what people are doing in life today. So a lot, a lot of times, that's what people are showing themselves doing on Instagram or on TikTok or on Snapchat or on YouTube. You know, the things that you're seeing that are becoming popular. Um, those are things that people actually relate to. And you know, millions of people have seen, for example, a video of someone cutting soap and enjoyed it. And then like 50 other people have come and made videos of themselves cutting soap. Then you know, and like millions of people are watching those videos too. You know, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, th that's, that's just one place where people are showing you what they do, um, you know, and what they enjoy and what they like watching and what they like experiencing. So anywhere that you can, you know, on a large scale, find a lot of people saying, hey, this thing is really cool. Uh, that's a good place to look for inspiration for hyper casual, I would say. Great. I have one personal question that I would like to uh, ask. Um, I, I'm, and possibly, I'm sorry, guys. I yeah. know there are a bunch of them there. Uh, but um, people do talk about publishing agreements. And, uh, and, and uh, they also always say that you need to be cautious about it. Um, and, and the advice comes in that, Hey, hyper casual, uh, hyper casual uh, developer. Make sure that you are very um, cautious about what you're signing. Or, and so, any advice that you like to give? Um, any contract that you sign as a game studio, you should look at. You know, as any studio, honestly, you should look at very carefully. Um, hyper casual publishing contracts specifically have certain terms that could confuse developers. Um, like re recoupability, for example, is something that you know gets talked about a lot. Um, whether the money you're getting up front is going to get recouped later on from the profit share, you know, it's going to get deducted from what you're going to make. So that's one term to look to look at carefully. Um, trying trying to secure the best kind of deal for your studio at the right time is something important. So trying to find, you know, what is the right structure for the deal? Are you getting uh, you're getting paid per prototype? How much are you getting paid per prototype? Is it a CTR prototype? Is it a CPI prototype? Are you getting different amounts for each one? Um, are, you, are you on a minimum guarantee deal like a lot of the crazy hub studios with us are on right now? Um, you know, what, what is the structure of the deal? And yeah, there are things in contracts that need to be looked at carefully. Um, but I, I, I don't think there's anything, you know, so complicated or bad um, in these contracts that could, you know, screw someone over, so to speak. Like, uh, it's... The, there are terms. There are terms to the deal, and um, you can negotiate those terms if you're in a position to negotiate with the publisher, and you can ask them to remove certain clauses. Um, they may not agree, and you may be free then to go to someone else and try to ask them for a better deal. You know, so yeah, there are terms. Um, I don't think anything is designed to you know hurt anyone. I think um, a lot of the terms are designed to just protect the publisher, and there are terms designed to protect the developer as well. So. I'll read the contract carefully, try to understand all the clauses because each publisher has different terms that they work under. And, you know, you, if there's any confusion about anything, you can always ask someone like me or, you know, someone else who's got a contract already um, to clarify. But uh, ideally, get a lawyer to look at the contracts um, before you sign anything because you, you want to get any contract looked at legally. Lovely. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Trojit. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining and for uh, the session. Uh, you know, we can connect with Trojit and uh, you know, ask questions that you may have. And uh, there is another talk that is happening right now um, that you might title. It's uh, Sensor Tower. Uh, 
uh, Craig Chappell from Sensor Tower is speaking of the uh, state of uh, global mobile uh, industry right now, gaming wise. And uh, so please join there. And then uh, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, definitely again. join that. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, bye now. Hey, we can All go right. to the Thanks, guys. Show.